Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Ben Margolis. I'm a graduate student at UC Davis, um, and I'm excited to um, share a project that I've been working on for the last uh, four years or so. Um, it's called SimuPy. It's a Python framework for modeling and simulating dynamical systems. Um, so for, uh, just to define it, dynamical systems are um, either a differential equation with an output function um, or just an output um, function. And uh, they're pretty much how we model everything. Um, so for any particular system, you could have a state and that might be represented by a point in Rn. Um, you could have an input, uh, which would, might be a point in Rm, um, and then possibly that state equation if there is a state and an output equation. Um, and one thing you'll note is I don't allow, uh, in this model of dynamical systems, I'm not allowing feed through for um, systems with a state. So that uh, output equation um, for the system with a state does not have a U in it. Um, and that makes some of the integration that we'll be doing uh, later easier. Um, so if you have a model of a system, a dynamical model of a system, um, you can put those together in block diagrams. Block diagrams are conceptual tools to build complex systems from simpler models. Um, the block diagrams that I'll be talking about are a general form of field-specific diagrams, like circuit diagrams or even free body diagrams. Um, and one of the key features uh, is that it allows you to work at different levels of abstraction. Um, which is very useful for analyzing problems um, and learning about them. Um, and the key thing is that a block diagram has different models and different connections between the possibly subsystems. Um, and if you have a block diagram, you could um, solve, solve it algebraically, um, uh, which would, um, so that you could create one uh, system out of that block diagram. Um, but that's a lot of work. So, um, so for example, this uh, is a circuit diagram of a op amp. And um, so that, this is very field specific. Um, it's very, if you know the details, it tells you a lot. Um, but sometimes you don't care about the details, so you want to abstractify it a little bit and go to something more like this, um, where now the details are lost, but you get the same conceptual flow, and it's even easier to see the conceptual flow, um, so because you, you don't have to do uh, Kirchhoff's current law or anything like that. Um, and one of my favorite types of block diagrams of op amps is you have to parse it a little bit differently, but this is a block diagram implemented with uh, op amps. Um, so there's a, uh, a couple op amps in here that are different models that you might put together um, to create a block diagram. Um, and there's a, this is actually from a 1985 um, video, oh no. Uh, of, um, from a course on control systems, which is my field, uh, and the professor, this is pre-computer um, simulation, so the simulation is all being done um, uh, with analog electronics, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, so instead of matplotlib, he's got a little uh, oscilloscope. Um, and you can't really talk about block diagrams without talking about Simulink. Uh, Simulink is um, the proprietary MATLAB um, block diagram based uh, simulation software package. Um, it's, extreme, it's, it's extremely prolific. I don't think, uh, if you know what Simulink is, you uh, know how popular it is. Um, and uh, as Scientific Python has been taking off, um, people are wondering where the next, where the Simulink alternative is. Um, and uh, that's what I've been motivated to build, and I don't think it's a full replacement, but I think um, it does a lot of the th things that I needed um, from Simulink. So to uh, introduce you to uh, SimuPy, um, I'm going to be working with a uh, simple um, pendulum uh, and hanging down a simple uh, pedant pendulum. 
um, pendant, pendulum. Um, so this would be a free body, this is a free body diagram. I'm using X as the angle, um, the angular position of the uh, pendulum. It has a length, a mass, and gravity is acting on it. Um, so there's a lot of ways to analyze this, but we can go ahead and turn it into a block diagram. Um, and here I have a uh, block that represents the inertia. Um, so that's a system with state that would be the position and velocity, um, and an input, which would be a force acting on the joint. Um, and it has two outputs. I just let it output both the position and the velocity. Um, and we connect it into a model of gravity, which is a position-dependent uh, force. So it's MLG times sine uh, x. Um, and so now we want to put this into SimuPy. Uh, so this is a bunch of importing um, and a couple helper plot, plot functions. Um, but this is how we define a, a symbolic uh, dynamical system. Uh, we'll also be doing um, defining dynamical systems using just uh, functions. Um, but so if you define, um, uh, declare your uh, symbols um, from SimPy, uh, you have the dynamic symbols, which would be um, basically signals, your state variables or um, forces that are, or other things that are being transmitted. Um, you could have uh, constant parameters. Then you um, tell it what your state equations are. So I've um, written a symbolic version of the np.r underscore. Um, so this is just creating an, uh, an array of expressions. So it's the same x dot equals v and v dot equals u over ml squared. Um, your state is x and v, the input is u. Um, and you can define your parameters. And then for gravity, it's the same thing. So now for gravity, there's no state. So it's just the output equation, the input, and the constant parameters. And then we put them together. Um, so you declare a block diagram. You pass it your two systems. You connect them. So gravity has only one output. And the inertia has one input, uh, the force that's being acted on the joint. Um, the inertia does have two outputs, so we have to tell when we connect, when we tell uh, the gravity, the position of the um, pendulum, uh, we have to tell it that it's the zero th output, which is the position and not the velocity. Um, and then we can uh, go ahead and do block diagram dot simulate and time. Um, and then I am passing that straight into my plotting function. Um, and I get something that doesn't look so great. Um, but then I remember if I have a pendulum hanging there, it will still just hang there. So that's OK. Um, so instead, we can change the initial conditions. And uh, so if we set it to 60 degrees and then re-simulate it, um, so I can change that just by uh, setting the parameter to the initial condition um, and passing in a numeric array uh, for the two states. Um, and then I get the oscillations that I would like to see. Um, and so now we're going to start taking advantage of the actual block diagram approach of system analysis. So um, the uh, inertia system is a linear system um, in the state and the input, and that makes a lot of things really simple. But the gravity term is not. It has that sign of x, so that makes it nonlinear. Um, but a common linearization we do is to just approximate sign by x. Um, and so what's nice about block diagrams is that we can just change the input back and forth. Um, and we don't lose track of all the different parts that are um, happening, uh, that are going on. And we can uh, represent that quite easily with SimuPy. So I can create um, a linearized gravity system. Uh, so I just do uh, negative g. I should have an m in there, but I set it to 1, so it's OK. Uh, negative g x over l. Um, I can just add it to the block diagram. And then I can connect it. And when I connect uh, to one input, it clears the other inputs. So um, I can also loop over the initial conditions, the angles. Um, so I'm looping over that here. And then inside, in each loop, I connect one of the gravity models, simulate it, and then connect the other one and simulate it. So it's really this exact thing um, that we would draw. Um, we can do in code quite easily. Um, and so this is the output. Um, and this is uh, something 
that you would see um, in undergrad, perhaps, uh, in controls. So if your initial um, condition is small, as it is here, the linearized gravity model is quite good. Um, you know, it's several oscillations before it's starting to diverge a little bit. But at large uh, amplitudes, the uh, linearized and nonlinear models are diverge much quicker. Um, and the other thing you'll see is uh, that the linear um, uh, model has a period, constant period independent of the amplitude. Um, so it's just fun to see all those uh, features come out from such a simple example. Um, so now we can introduce uh, viscous damping. Um, this is, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep the nonlinear gravity and add the damping. Um, so it's easy to create the viscous damping system, but then uh, the inertia only has one input, the force. Um, so we need someone to help us out, and luckily I know someone who can help us. So I can create a um, summing system uh, using an L a linear time invariant system. So uh, it's just a helper function that makes it easy to um, uh, create systems using matrices, uh, NumPy matrices. So by creating a gain matrix, um, a one by five gain matrix, the result is that it sums the five possible inputs. Um, unfortunately, right now, uh, SimuPy does not um, resolve the flow order. So if I added the summer um, to the block diagram, it would never actually see the outputs of the other systems. Um, so I need to create a new block diagram um, in an order uh, that will resolve correctly. So I do inertia, the summer, um, gravity and viscous damping. And then I can do all of this, um, the same uh, similar connection. So I connect the velocity to the viscous damping uh, because it's a force that depends on the velocity. Um, I connect the summer to the inertia. So the sum of all the forces goes to the inertia. Uh, and then I can connect the gravity term um, to the summer and the position back to the um, gravity. Um, and then, and then I can also sweep over different values of the damping coefficient. Um, so I have uh, a little iterator and I plot over that. Um, and you get something that even in SimuLink uh, might be a little bit tedious depending on um, the amount of programming experience someone has um, to, to feel comfortable enough to get to the programmatic approach. Um, whereas by being in Python directly, um, it's kind of obvious uh, what the right thing to do is to, to play with these types of parameters. Um, so that was fun. Let's add another input. Um, we can make some noise. And um, to do that, um, since I am using adapt, um, the integrators from SciPy, which sample uh, the derivative of the systems. If I need to have a noise model that um, will give the same results in the same, from the same condition. Um, so to do that, I'm going to sample uh, n, um, take n samples from a zero mean Gaussian distribution. Um, I'm going to distribute that over time and take a zero order hold um, as my first step. So that's what all this does. I use a, um, a discrete interpolating function, which is just a previous neighbor um, interpolating function uh, to do that. Um, so just to plot it, so this is what um, the noise I got uh, on this run. And um, um, now I want to, oh, didn't change, um, to uh, filter that through a low pass filter. So um, as a controls person and not a signals person, the easiest way for me to do that is to um, run it through a, uh, a low order, a low pass um, filter system and just simulate it in my block diagram. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, so I can create a system for my uh, um, function that um, my interpolating function um, connected to the filter, simulate the filter, and then um, 
and then use a uh, continuous interpolating function to um, take the trajectory, that's continuous trajectory, um, and get uh, a noise function and system from that. Um, so this is the slightly smoothed um, uh, noise trajectory that I'll be pulling from uh, when I simulate with noise. Um, so then I just take that interpolating function of that smooth uh, noise, add it to my block diagram, and I can uh, um, uh, connect it to the summer. And now, uh, if I set the initial condition to zero, I can just see what happens to the pendulum as if it were hanging in the wind. Um, so, you know, it oscillates a little bit um, up to four degrees. But um, that wasn't very exciting. So we could uh, do a more exciting input, um, like a sinusoid at the natural frequency of the pendulum. So uh, taking out that white noise and putting in the sinusoid, um, I can uh, create a function, a lambda function, uh, that gives the output of the sinusoid, create the system from that. Um, and then we can just look at the, uh, the uh, output of that. Um, that's not it. Oh, uh, well, the, the sign on top of the noise figure didn't come out, um, but I made it about the same amount of power that's being put into the system. Um, and this is the output. Um, so it's um, exciting to see that the exciting system actually generates uh, the larger amplitude like you would expect, even though the power is about the same. Um, and actually, the power from the noise is a little bit more. But because it's not resonant, it doesn't excite the system um, to the higher amplitudes that the sinusoid does. Um, and then a feature I didn't quite know how to uh, put in with the pendulum example are events. So um, with discontinuities, uh, to to get a good um, solution to a, uh, um, a differential equation with um, discontinuities, you need to have an events um, handler. So I've added that to the integration loop. Um, so this is a bouncing ball um, with, uh, which is the, actually the example Simulink uses for their event system. Um, and it works um, quite well. Um, so this is the code for it. Um, so I have a helper function uh, to make it easier to write um, some classes of discontinuous systems. Uh, so it's a very similar model. We have the, uh, basically the double integrator. Um, and what I'm doing is um, I'm creating a boundary if, um, at zero for the x, um, the position variable. And whenever it crosses, I change the position uh, to the absolute value, uh, which should be a small number because it finds where the impact happened and uh, interpolates to get a pretty accurate um, uh, approximation of, of where that impact occurs. So it should be very close to zero. Um, and then have a uh, bounce um, uh, uh, multiplier, mu, um, which flips the sign and reduces the, um, uh, takes some of the energy out. Um, and then it is uh, a harder problem, so I did have to change some of the integrator options. Um, but um, I can, you can simulate it, and that's the previous uh, figure I showed. Um, and you can also get an analytic calculation for when the impact should occur, um, and it's right on the dot, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, so... Um, that's just a brief introduction to SimiPy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I to totally want people to tr check it out and help me build it. I've been uh, doing this alone for the last four years. Um, so um, just some concluding remarks. Um, I want the API to really um, serve um, system and model-based um, analysis approaches. Um, so even the function names match kind of the uh, the uh, more rigorous um, uh, naming schemes and things like that. Um, 
And I also want to point out, I'm not in trying to make this a full-fledged simulator. Having some events is really useful, especially in control systems. You need saturation blocks um, and things like that. And, um, but I don't want to be Mudoku or anything. Um, the other uh, fun thing is that the linear analysis works. So in my tests and in some of my examples, I have um, uh, comparisons of the autonomous system of if you did the um, analysis your, manually and created a single system compared to a block diagram with a system in a controller. Um, and those uh, match up perfectly. And you can also do things like for a linear time invariant system, get the uh, use discrete time systems um, uh, using the Laplace transform. Um, the documentation is, and test coverage is pretty good, uh, but I've been working on a couple new features. Um, so I just changed the way discrete time systems are handled. So they have basically an internal clock and the event system handles it now. Um, and I also want to make it, make, uh, give you the ability to um, s create systems from block diagrams um, so that you can get those different levels of abstraction that are so useful. Um, yeah, so it, it is fairly stable, but I do have a slightly premature 1.0 on PyPI. Um, so that's it, thanks. Any questions? So, any question? Oh. Hi. So, um, I noticed that you, or so you know, you dealt with discontinuities by you know turning down the tolerance or turning up or I don't know up or yeah. down the tolerance, yeah. changing the tolerances on the solver. Yeah. How did you um, how did you manage the the fact that noise will cause similar small-scale discontinuities? Um, yeah, so, so uh, I do actually um, cheat a bit. So I simulate all the way to 25, um, and it only simulates to like 21 because uh, there's chatter at the end. So I don't have a system for clamping that chatter, um, but uh, for these bigger, um, when there's bigger breaks between um, the discontinuity events, it, it handles it quite well. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, it's the, um, when you, you had a place where you added noise to the system? Yeah, that's, uh, I didn't have it for the bouncing ball. Okay. Um, yeah, so. I was just wondering how, how you made that work. Like, did you, what, what did you change about the, how did you put the noise in, or where, where did the noise enter? Yeah, so that was the, um, uh, I, I created, I took samples, distributed that through time, um, and then from that I had just treated that like a zero, I assumed it was a zero order hold. Oh, okay. And then I passed that through a first order system to smooth it a bit, so that this oh, is a smooth okay. one. I see what, okay. So this is no, a trajectory of noise yeah. um, that the integrator calls yeah. so that it's, uh, at the same time, the same noise is present. No, okay, that makes sense, because otherwise you have yeah. you know, discontinuity in every single exactly, step. Exactly, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I just want to say, first of all, thanks for doing this, because, you know, simulation's hard, but, yeah. like, you know, doing it generally is really hard. <laughs> so, um, so two quick questions. The first thing was, uh, you said you're using the SciPy integrators, or are, yeah. do you have a custom? Okay. Or you, what? The SciPy integrate ODE, is that the one? Or Yeah, um, integrate.ode, okay. yeah, the and old. Do you run into stiffness problems with that often, or is it not? A, into what uh, problems? Stiffness, like problem is stiff. Um, uh, you Sometimes, um, I found that if you define uh, the models well, um, they you can avoid some of them, um, and some also go away if you convert it to like an event-based system, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, so if it's truly a stiff problem, you need a stiff solver, but you can pass in, you can say um, uh, ODE 15S or whatever, um, I forget which. So any of the variable step size with dense output um, will work great. I used to be able to support LSOTA, um, and fixed step size mm. solvers, um, but right now it's broken in service of the uh, discrete time systems being handled by events. Okay. And then the other question is, I had some API ideas, so should I post like a issue sure, or email yeah, you? Sure, yeah, that'd be or? great. Okay, cool. 
Okay, any other questions? All right, if not, uh, let's thank the speaker again.